Turn your cameras off. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so um, welcome everyone. Uh, I'll just be introducing a few sites that I've uh, used a lot uh, in the last semester, and I'll explain why I think I, I, I enjoy using call, so I often experiment with all sorts of different sites. So uh, I've found these to be the best of many different ones that I've uh, tried out. Um, and I'll firstly just go through them pretty simply and tell you what they can do and uh, why I think they're uniquely good. And um, after that, people can ask me more detailed questions about how to use them or whatever as uh, takes your interest. So let's just start with an overview. Uh, so the first one is uh, Lingo Lab Online. This is a site that I've made uh, with my research money. I've developed it over the last couple of years with um, the developer Paul Rain. Uh, and this is for setting self-study quizzes and live games with phrases and sentences. Uh, the second site is uh, formative. For some reason, the site is go formative. Uh, and the best thing about this is that you can set questions for students and you can uh, see their answers as they are responding. Um, there's a few different sites that you can do this with. Um, and I did some experimenting with doing this function with connected Google Sheets earlier in the semester. Um, but when I found this one, I realized an important difference was that um, you can actually see the progress letter by letter as they're typing in. So you can see it really mid response. Uh, and the third site I'll introduce is uh, Teacher Tools Digital, which has just very recently been renamed Zengingo. And the uh, it, it has so many different functions, but really the main thing that I've um, used it for has been to set short texts. And um, there was recently a uh, an article shared to OTJ about <clears throat> how how rarely students read texts that you set them for homework. And um, so doing it in a way like this is, is a way to keep it account. Okay, so that is the overview. Let's get on to the actual sites. Okay, so Lingo Lab. Uh, so what is it for? It's for productive phrase level practice from a given prompt with a <coughs> specific answer. Uh, it's useful for grammar, situational functional phrases, and vocabulary in context, like in a sentence context. Uh, it has automatic feedback and a review system in the lingolab.co version. And why use it? Well, how else can you provide accountable practice at the sentence level? Uh, so if you use like a Google form, uh, kids could be using machine translation for putting in their answers. Also with the Google form, you can't get any, uh, you can't use automatic feedback. So you would have to go through manually and check your sentence. Uh, secondly, uh, flashcard practice can't be meaningfully tracked at the sentence level. Something like Quizlet is pretty good for words or even short phrases, because you can do things like having them type in the answer and stuff. But uh, for sentences, you really can't use those activities. And you can only track if they've looked at flashcards. You don't know if they've processed that information at all. They could literally be just flicking through the, the flashcard set. Um, and thirdly, uh, Duolingo has sort of similar uh, activity types with sentences, constructing the sentences although it doesn't have all of the modes that are in Lingo Lab. And it doesn't allow for putting in your own content or sort of controlling the flow and the activity types. 
So that is why a linger lab is, um, is a useful platform. Let me show you some uh, pictures of Linger Lab. So Linger Lab actually has several sites. So Linger Lab Online is the uh, teacher's hub for Linger Lab activities. So with that, you can monitor the progress uh, of people using Linger Lab CEO, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and you can make custom sets and you can also create uh, clippings. Uh, yeah, Alex writes, you can do uh, word matching sets of words and stuff, but you can't really do much with productive sentence of the uh, Okay, let me show you the actual Lingo Lab CEO site first, so you can get a better idea. I oh, actually, sorry, let me jump back here and give you just an overview of the different uh, sorts of um, activities that you can set up. So uh, as I said, you can have a uh, kind of uh, a prompt and the learners will be forming the answer here. You can see it with a single letter, a uh, single word item here, a uh, phrase item here, and a sentence item here. You can have text as the prompt, either English or Japanese, um, or you can have audio or uh, pictures or any combination. Uh, we can see uh, in this answer mode, you can see all of the um, words on the tiles here. So this is pretty much like Duolingo or lots of um, Narabi Kaya type of activities. Uh, but in this mode, it's much more challenging. So from here, all of the middle letters, all of the inner letters are hidden. So you can't work uh, by recognizing the words. Um, the users have to actually know what the vocabulary is before they'll be selecting their files. So this is a more, much more productive, challenging productive level activity. Uh, we can have uh, audio cues, as I mentioned, and you can actually have this audio, um, this is text-to-speech audio, that can be based on the question. So it could be asking the question, and then the student is answering that question, or it could actually be playing the target, um, the target sentence, just like a dictation, sentence level dictation. Uh, with the picture, picture mode, it is, uh, yeah, you can have questions about the picture, for example. You can do dictations about the picture. Uh, you can do sort of mm, prep for info gap style activities, something like this. So anyway, that's the general activity type uh, and the different sort of options that you have for setting up activities. Um, in Lingo Lab CO, this is the self-study version and this tracks their progress. Uh, so when they get it correct, the items move up. Uh, if they get it incorrect, they make mistakes, it will go down. So this um, you know, gives them more practice with ones that they need it with. Um, let's just have a go with this. Okay, maybe you can see that. So we also have a, a few limiting sort of factors here um, to ensure that they are inputting the target sentence that you want them to. Uh, often word order, could, there could be different possible word orders in a target sentence. So adding these kinds of length limitations is one way to, to sort of guide them to, to, to the correct one. Uh, let's see, I don't know. To do. Uh, 
Okay, so there's five, always five questions at the end. Oh, maybe I'll have this mountain. Uh, at the end, you can see that. Uh, what did I have? Yeah, that's what happens if you make a mistake. And you might notice up here that turned orange. So that means that this, this item is going to be shown to me again because I made a mistake. Uh, one more. Just to show you again, if you uh, if the first uh, word will always be capitalized, that's another hint just to sort of make sure people um, give the the desired uh, version of of the uh, translation required. Uh, what's this one? So this is uh, a lot of people have kind of hangups about using translation in class. Uh, I think more recently, more recent research is showing that L1 is a very natural part of language learning. That's that that uh, trend continues. Uh, so here at the end of five, after five questions, you can see a review of those questions, the new ratings. We can have. Uh, I don't know the, uh, what to do. We will play the audio. Okay, I better move on to uh, the next site. I don't want to run out of time showing all these sites. Uh, but anyway, so this is the self study site. Um, there is the Lingo Lab online site, which is the teacher's site with which you can monitor the progress of students using that very easily. Um, and you can also make your own custom sets. You can also set uh, quizzes. And there's also a live game similar, similar to Quizlet Live. It's not collaborative, but you're all answering questions at the same time and sort of competing uh, online. OK, so uh, I'll move on to the next sites. If you're interested in these, um, I'll just give you this link and you can Check it out yourself in your own time if we don't have time to answer your questions at the end. Okay, so let's move on to formative. So what is it for? Uh, this is great for setting open questions and viewing the answers while they, while the students are still responding. Uh, this can help you to see whether users have have actually started or are in the process. Uh, can help correct them. Can help you correct them while they're writing and ensure they're on topic. Um, so why use it rather than other systems? So this updates the view after every character entered. So mid word, you can see what they're writing. Uh, so this is better than other, some other live response systems like Nearpod, which has a submit button, which users click after completing an answer. So if you use the live response system in Nearpod, they will write their whole answer and then push submit. But in that case, you don't know if they're actually sort of on the right track. You don't know at what sort of stage they're in in their writing. You don't know if they've actually started or haven't written anything. Um, so it's a hugely important difference, I think. Um, the same is with Socrative. I don't know if people are familiar with Socrative. That's another live response system that I used for quite a while and enjoyed. But uh, again, it has like a special button for submitting. So you can't see questions in the process. Uh, after I discovered this, I really used it for <clears throat> pretty much everything. Um, so whether you're asking questions of your directly to your students, you might want to sort of have them think about uh, a discussion topic before you put them in breakout rooms and you can actually see that they've prepared some kind of content. Or you can have it, uh, I often used it in the breakout rooms, so having them sort of report um, their answers from within the breakout rooms and that way from my, you know, from the main room, um, 
That's right, Alex. Alex sent a message saying you'd see immediately if it's copy pasted. Yeah, it has a special function actually showing you if it's copy pasted. No, I'll, I'll show you that. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, yeah. While they're in the breakout rooms, you can, um, you, yeah, you can see where they're where they're at, uh, and give feedback on it as well. Okay, let me show you um, that formative one. And it does have a bunch of other functions as well. There's different question types and all sorts of things. Um, it's pretty easy to use. I don't love the interface, but uh, you know, you, you get used to it. Um, I'll show you a assignment that has been completed and that will give you an uh, idea of what you see while we're working. Okay, so can you see this? Uh, so this is, yeah, this is what you'll see. Um, these were questions about uh, Simpsons video they saw. Um, so this is question one, we're seeing all of their answers. We can uh, adjust this view here a bit. We can get a preview of the Questions. Take a little bit of time to load it up. There we go. Preview of the questions. Uh, we can get an overview of all of the uh, all of the students here, and we can hide their names and show their names if we want to uh, be displaying the people's answers to the, to the class after they're finished to show some good examples. <coughs> we can hide the names, but you can go them there. Uh, you can sort of go through and see individual students' answers to individual questions or everyone's answers to one question. Uh, this feedback here, if I click that way, I can see all of the answers, all of one particular student's answers to. Uh, all the questions. Uh, yeah, so that's the that's the main benefit of this one. Uh, if people are interested, we can have a go at uh, uh, people joining up as a, a guest. You don't have to sign in apparently. You just can come and use it as a, a guest if you want to try answering some questions and seeing what that's like. Okay, so. We'll move on to the next site. Um, if you do have questions about what or why, jump in anytime for uh, more questions about how we'll get into them at the end, I think. Okay, so next site. Zengengo, okay, teach tools. Uh, so as I said earlier, this is great for setting text for homework that you can ensure will be read and listened to by the students. So why use it rather than other systems? There's plenty of other kinds of um, LMSs that'll let you do a, uh, uh, you know, close activities. But as far as I know, there's none that have this kind of text to speech function, which make it really handy. So you can just copy and paste in a text and uh, just click one setting, and it's going to allow um, the users to push a play button and that will hear the whole text. There's lots of different task types in Teach Tools Digital, um, but even within just this one task type of um, using. Uh, texts. There's quite a, quite a bit of variety in different settings you can use to provide different kinds of practice. And these task types are really especially for EFL. So in a lot of LMSs, some of the functions like text-to-speech and stuff might not be really considered very useful, but because this system is made especially for uh, language learning, um, it has some of those things that you won't find elsewhere. 
There's also different in input methods for the close activities. So it can be selecting the words, it can be typing them in uh, one by one. Okay, let me show you some examples for that. Uh, let's see. Let's get this one. I don't know if you know uh, humans from New York. It's a really nice uh, source of interesting personalized stories. Uh, so here we have the text to speech. And <clears throat> a lot of people use, I mean, the normal sort of use of close activities is some kind of discrimination task or vocab task. So they have to think what is the correct answer to go in there. But um, I use them just, uh, I've been using them mainly just to ensure that students have actually read the text. So they have to listen to it. And as soon as they listen to it, if they're listening carefully and properly and reading carefully enough, they'll easily be able to answer these questions. It's not supposed to be particularly challenging, um, but it does ensure that they've actually read it and listened to it. You can do other activities later, like when they come into class, that's when you can maybe do more discussion or comprehension questions, but at least you know that they have uh, been through the text. And you can set, there are other activity types too, which um, we'll show you soon. Let's just hear this I think she started to realize that it wasn't going to happen for her. She was in her 40s. She hadn't met the right person to start a family with. And after her third field insemination, she had enough money to try. Okay, so the voice quality is a, a little bit robotic. It's totally fine for uh, like newscasts, but it's very clear. And uh, I think it's fine for, for most uh, purposes. If you had a text that was supposed to be very emotional or something like that, then it might seem strange to have this kind of voice reading it. But I think it's great for most uh, purposes. Okay, uh, let's see, do I have another example? Um, yeah, let's see if I can get up this. Um, just some different task types. Sometimes I found it nice to use different tasks with the same text so that they're actually getting recycling the same the same text. Um, and I'll try and do that more methodically this semester, like maybe one one day assign one it in one sort of format and then after the next lesson assign it in a different format and then do a, a follow-up task later on so they really get the repetition, the space space repetition. Uh, so here we have just a different one. I mean, you can, this is kind of just a fun end of the story. Um, yeah, I just have just the text there and the listening. And then in the next stage, this is, this is one feature too. You can string different activities together as a, as a lesson, a cool lesson. So they could be doing that and then going on to here. Uh, Liz just asked, uh, do we have time to show how to create these? Uh, I hope so, we'll see. Um, can you see this activity here? So this is reconstructing the sentence. So it'd be pretty tricky for them to do this if they just skipped past the first reading and listening thing. So uh, hopefully they'll learn that it is in their interest. Um, to actually, you know, read it first. So this kind of text reconstruction, still just more language processing and making sure they're getting that. Okay, all right. So I think you've seen basically what the functions are. I guess, um, of course, um, as a teacher, you can see their, um, the students' scores, how well they did on doing those activities. And, Hey, are there any questions about the what or the why for the uh, Zeng angle? Might just stop for a minute, stop sharing. 
And let's see. So out of those three sites, as uh, uh, Liz just asked. Excuse me, think. Oliver. Yep. Um, Go ahead. You, you asked for questions, and there is a question from Liz in the chat. Uh -huh. uh, do you have time to show how you create these? Yeah, yep, I hope so. That's what we're going to do uh, right now. I'll just try and get an idea uh, of um, what people want to see. And uh, Chris, if we could use all the time on just one of these. So let's just see what um, questions there are. And then I'll try and dip into those different sites and show you how to use it. Um, yeah, I mean, with all of them, now that you know what the functions are and why you might want to use them, uh, you can definitely just go to any of these sites and you would most probably be able to work out how to use them. Maybe, uh, yeah, I've provided the, the Lingo Lab help site before. The formative site is a very big uh, kind of commercial site. Um, like I said, it is free, has a lot of functionality. I used it for most of the semester, just free. You can use that, um, the functions that I was showing, uh, seeing the student. Um, students answers in progress you can use that for free um, i did upgrade but i kind of didn't really need to uh, the zengenga one uh, i think you can get a month free trial after that it's something like eight to ten dollars a month maybe um, i think if you're you know if you want to supplement for a lot of classes it's worthwhile and there might be some other discounts or something, I'm not sure. Okay, do we have any other questions? I think everyone's all eating lunch. Okay, well, no one else has asked anything, so I'll uh, take on uh, Liz's uh, question here about how to use uh, how to make something with Zen Engel. Uh, so again, okay, so let's go. Uh, so yeah, just feel free to um, jump in anytime, Liz, if uh, you have specific questions. Uh, I'll give you yeah, the, the basics of how to create a task. So this is the top, the top page. And this has a whole bunch of uh, folders. Within these folders are your assignments, and you make the you actually make the assignments in the folders. So let's jump into one. I actually have a special way of organizing them. I have sort of content folders and class folders. That way, I can kind of keep my make all sorts of contents and recycle them. And then I have make specific folders for each semester for the. Something here. Okay, so now we're in this folder and the one, so these are all different activities. As I said, there's a huge number of different uh, task types in here, but the one that I was showing you is the text gap fill. So you just click here. Hey, Oliver, what you're showing us now is that you have the free version now. Is that what you're showing us? Or do you uh, have no, no, I have a paid version. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not, uh, it's a free trial with everything available for one month, um, but it's not really like a freemium system like with some okay. functions. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you said that, but I, I got them mixed up which one you were talking about. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see, can I grab some text from somewhere quickly? Uh, 
grab a little bit of text from the mine too. Can I get the English version? It's kind of a bad choice, isn't it? Okay, let's uh, get just a little bit of text in here. Okay, I'm just going to use this bit here. Again. Okay, so we want a title. Title. You paste the text in here and uh, neaten it up a bit. It's good to get rid of any. Uh, Mm, you know, unnecessary spaces and things. Otherwise it will actually go to different pages. It's a good idea to experiment with the formatting a little bit. In fact, that before you, after you input the test, the, the text, before you sort of decide on the close elements, it's really good to just preview it. Because I've found sometimes I would make the whole activity and uh, choose the close things and then find the formatting wasn't very good. So then you have to remake the whole thing. Um, so I'm just going to save it. So, um, so that I can get the preview. Sorry, it's a little bit slow today. I think my connection might be slow like other people. Working I think it's. Today. I think it's giving. It seems like it's giving you a an error. Ah. That you remove at least one. Ah, word. right, right, right. Okay. Ah, yeah. That's right. Thank you. You do have to choose at least one. So I just choose anyone. <clears throat> and then we can review like this. Uh, and uh, okay, so the text looks fine. I'm going to go back and just change the close and make some decide what uh, mode I want to put it in. Yep, typing this is this is nice if you want them to actually type out the individual letters rather than you know, choosing choosing words. Uh, so so you just click on the ones that you want to. Bit about uh, if you want to have that text to speech thing, if you want to show that, then yeah, you have to select the voice here. Um, they're all very high quality. This one is especially good. You can test them out. Hi, my name is Matthew, and this is my voice. Which is uh, there's American ones, Hi, British ones, Australian Sally, ones. This is my voice. Okay, I think we're gonna go with that. And I'm sorry, is in the answer mode, are there only the two choices, the typing mode and then a selection mode? Uh, let's choice? see. Uh, I think I can't change it now. Um, oh, okay. There's, okay. I think there's one more, but sorry, I don't, can't think of it. Okay. The, the one is, yeah, it has all the, the word options in a drop down. And then the other one is typing with letter spacing. So you see how many words are in the letter, which is nice. Okay. Just prevents yeah. little spelling mistakes. It helps them out a little bit. And then there's one without letter spacing, so more open, which can be good, especially if you're doing some kind of grammar discrimination. If you had them typing in A or the uh, definite artic uh, articles or something, 
you don't want it showing them that there's just one one letter because that's going to tell them the answer. Right. Okay, so let's update that. And let's preview that. All right, and here it is. Our showcase of organizations and communities' efforts toward a new way of thinking about the future. Staying informed during times of uncertainty is crucial, which is why the Japan Times is providing free access to select stories about the coronavirus pandemic. Please consider subscribing today and support our efforts to deliver the news that matters. Okay, so that's basically how it works. That's how quick it is to um, set one up. They can uh, adjust the speed here. They can do it faster or uh, slower. And there's different options on that last page. It did give you a few options. You can give them their score or, or just, a, um, just a confirmation of submission. <clears throat> and yep, I can see some feedback there. Um, yeah, that's how you make one. Did you have any more questions about that? Uh, is it possible to take this assignment and convert it into one of the other kinds of assignments or do you have to start from scratch each time? Um, there's something called uh, Lesson Wizard, which yeah, you put in one text and it kind of produces uh, a handful of different activity types from it. Um, Usually they need some kind of adjusting because you need you kind of teacher's knowledge to discriminate what's going to make a useful task. But it can be good just to generate those different types and then you edit them. And uh, that, yeah. that can be a good quick That's way. That's really to, cool. To but I can show you that one if you like, the lesson wizard here. Let's try it. That'll also show you um, some different activity types. Like I said, when it's just sort of generating them automatically. Uh, the, some of the choices that might, might need to be that way. Um, and that text in there, Let's see, yeah. So uh, select the activities you would like to generate. Let's do that for speaking for not just this, let's do more. The, um, the speaking drill is like a speech recognition type activity, which is actually really good. Um, I haven't used it because I got sort of higher level students, but for lower level students, it could be a really good way of uh, you know, making sure you're getting some uh, you know, oral output of uh, sentences. I think it can even be a longer, longer level, longer lengths than, than that too. Uh, okay, let's have a look here. Let's turn that. Okay, so JT test, those were the ones that we just made there. Um, I can show you the speaking drill one. Well, it's a pretty long sentence. I probably wouldn't normally sign something like this, but let's let's try it. Um, okay, so you can they can hear an example here. Depending on the settings, you can go into the settings, and there's all sorts of different possible uh, uh, combinations ways you can set it up, whether they have a prompt or a text prompt, a picture prompt, or whether they get to hear the target or hear a different question, all sorts of things. So this will just be uh, listen to the audio and read the words. Okay. Staying informed during times of uncertainty is crucial. Okay, and if we go button here. 
staying informed during times of uncertainty is crucial, which is why the Japan Times is providing free access to select stories about the coronavirus situation. Let's see how well it recognizes. Mm. I said the last word differently. Let's see if it picks that up. Uh huh. Okay, right. Yeah. So, I'm not sure about that little vert, but we reduce those so much that's pretty normal for it to miss that maybe. And it did pick up that last one there. Um, yeah, I have been really impressed with this um, in terms of, yeah, how accurate it is in not, um, I don't know, a lot of speech recognition systems are kind of frustrating because they don't understand you even as a, a native speaker, um, like with the English Central one. But I found this is, is quite good. It's not too strict, um, but it is strict enough. You can't just say anything and have it uh, uh, let you pass the activity. Okay, so that is the speech recognition one. Uh, what else? Vocab and grammar. This is one that we didn't show before. This. Uh, okay, this is similar to what I just showed before with the uh, you know playing and reading the text. Um, but here in this stage, you can choose vocab items. It's chosen these automatically, probably selecting the <clears throat> automatically checking the level. Uh, sorry, Alex, I missed that. You might have to just pipe up. If people have questions, just uh, just shout them out anytime. You can put them in the uh, in the chat, but I might not see them. I can see some uh, other questions too. I'll, I'll answer those in just a moment. Okay, so showing this vocab and grammar one. Yeah, so here the student will be uh, previewing the target vocab. And again, these settings, are in the settings, you can, you can adjust whether this is a, a um, Japanese translation or English, um, uh, Japanese definition or English definition. And then we have a little vocab quiz on those items. Uh, where are the I'll get one along just to see what happens. Uh, okay. Okay, I think uh, this is like test format, so it's not going to tell me that I got one wrong. But that's just going to be um, shown in the feedback at the end, I think. I don't know. I'm looking at that. Okay, and then this is that format from before, the like the jump sentence one. Uh, it is crucial. This is why the Japan Times is still running free access. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like that sentence reconstruction. I think it's not good. Great, right, so that is that type. Um, okay, let me just get on some questions from other people. Uh, Malaudi, Koshikawa, that's interesting how you organize your folders. Uh -huh. So you are a um, Teach Tools Digital user already. Um, yeah, I found I just had so, so many different, yeah, it was quite disorganized. I found that was the best way to approach it in the end to have some as uh, content folders. And then that makes specific ones for each class with the settings that I wanted for that class. Like you can register student names, and uh, then that's the easiest way to track their um, track their progress. Uh, Malaudi also asks about formative. The students need to create an account to get access, and did they agree easily to use different platforms? <laughs> They don't get a choice, so they don't get to agree or not. 
Um, but yeah, it was easy. Formative actually has, um, you can hook it up to Google Classroom. So if the students are already using Google Classroom, uh, makes it super, super simple. I used it with um, my lowest level class and everyone managed to connect um, even from the, uh, from the first time we tried it, it was successful. It's just uh, uh, unusual for that class. Uh, let's see. And yeah, you can actually use guest accounts. I was just checking that before to see if I could do a demo here and uh, it is possible. Um, yeah, you just, you can either assign it to a class or there's a, an option to assign it to, um, to uh, guest students. I'll uh, show you up here. So I've just chosen that assignment there. And let me see if I move the loop. Uh, okay, I have the assign button here. And you can see here that's connected to my Google Classroom button. And I can opt to the guest students. In that case, um, <clears throat> yeah, students don't need to be, or the users don't need to be signed up to the, to the site at all. Okay, other questions? Uh, Julie Ferguson is asking for Zengengo, how do you handle the AI not recognizing student speech because of poor pronunciation. Yeah, like I said, I, I haven't actually used it that much um, because I have the higher level students. But yeah, like um, I did try it out with the lowest level class and found it to be, um, yeah, as I was saying, not too strict and um, not too lenient. But its specialty is not for helping, it's not really a pronunciation trainer. I think a lot of these systems um, uh, don't, you know, yeah, they're not trying to identify pronunciation problems as such. So yeah, they're not gonna get detailed, detailed feedback or training about pronunciation, but I think just the practice of them having to actually say a number of sentences will uh, yeah, I, be beneficial. I, I think the same, I know I'm using, um, well, I use both this one and the, the um, communication spotlight is Paul, Paul's uh, yeah. mm -hmm. thing too. So the speech, the speaking task where they have to uh, put the words in order, mm -hmm. like say it uh, as part of the review, that's where some students are having a hard time. Like, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not recognizing it, so they're not able to see the words. Yeah. Do you think um, <clears throat> Do you think their pronunciation is good enough that it should be recognized? You think it's being too strict, or you think it's kind of good that it's yeah, I think making them repeat it? Pronunciation, yeah, is really yeah poor. So yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of katakana go, and yes, yeah, so it's difficult. Yeah, I mean, that's part of it, I guess. I mean, it doesn't stop them completing the activity. It'll just give them that feedback with the orange or, or the red or whatever. They'll still be able to hand it in, so they're not going to be completely stuck. And you might just want to tell the students, you know, just complete the activity. You don't don't worry if you get some, uh, if you can't make them all green. You know. I think that's it. Right. So, yeah. uh, hi, Alex. I think you have. Maybe have a question. Um, yeah, just a comment. The um, um, the the whole thing about the audio. The audio is really the the audio and the, also the speaking is really important. Um, Amanda knows more about this than I do, but uh, Professor Alan Badley with the working memory um, working memory yeah, uh, model that when students hear their own voice saying something, they actually um, it. it it delivers that information into the um, into memory and it mm -hmm. encodes it in a pattern. So even if they were listening and reading reading along with it, that's going to help um, certain people to remember. But if you've got students who've got uh, challenges like dyslexia or 
um, you know, ADD, like, so 10% of your class, if you're in certain kinds of classes, you might have 30 or 40% of your class might have reading, uh, reading and writing issues. Mm. Um, then, yeah, you want to, um, um, you would definitely want to use the audio functions. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed a huge increase in um, attitude by students by um, building in a audio aspect into my uh, into into my um, classwork. Uh -huh. so right. Really increase in motivation because basically the um, basically the um, typical readers will read and the information will go in um, and that sort of like sets off the semantic mapping. But a person who has um, a um, reading difference and again we're talking possibly a high percentage of students in certain classes mm. when they hear the information that's when the semantic mapping occurs right yeah so I mean, I that's just, why it's really useful yeah i just include it for everything even if um mm. even if that's not the sort of point of the activity yeah, yeah. um Perfect. and just with those ones that i was showing before yeah they just uh i mean it's important for them to know the pronunciation of for people without any reading difficulties i think it's useful mm. for, for, for them all uh, mm. it's great having that that option there and uh, mm. i think the quality of uh, the text to speech is is good enough these days yeah. mm. thanks alex thank you how are we doing we don't have much time left if we have any more questions or if you want to see further demos of functions or how to set things up let me know you have about seven minutes so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well maybe i'll ask questions to people if they're willing to I could ask Spong? you one question that's uh, rather technical, but um, how many of these tools like Socrative, uh, I think Socrative may have it, but uh, Formative, etc. do they have LTI compliance to integrate with other systems? Yeah, I'm not sure, sorry. Um, so that's a way of like connecting to Moodle or Blackboard or whatever, isn't it? Importing the results. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, Lingo Lab definitely doesn't. Socrative, yeah, sorry, I can't can't tell you confidently. I think formative. I think I did read something about formative adding that function, and it does connect to Google Classroom. Well, mm. I, I just had a quick look at formative site, and they mm -hmm. seem to integrate with several platforms, mm -hmm. um, and. I'm sort of wondering if that's LTI or not. <laughs> it, uh -huh. it probably is, but um, I'm not sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's very sort of American school system centric. So a lot of the functions are kind of based around American school standards and things like that. And they have a big library sharing materials for that. But that's not so useful for, for us. But uh, you can just ignore the excess. Um, excess. And functions. Right, right. Well, think um, about that. The Socrative one, just to show you, I had this um, tab ready to show, I might as well show it, because it's also a nice site. If you are doing shorter level, uh, if you're doing a quiz with shorter level answers, like single words or short phrases, the overview for the teacher is perhaps more convenient than uh, go for um, informative because you have a, a similar sort of setup that you can actually see all of the answers at once. So if you have a vocab test, um, you can be sort of keeping an eye on the screen and you can see students' progress through the test. You can see all of the students' progress through the, through the questions at one time. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's great for something like a TOEIC class with short answers. But uh, the formative for me was the best for yeah, monitoring breakout rooms and preparing for discussion for longer, um, using sort of longer text formats. So many tools, all with their specific strengths and weaknesses, eh? Hmm. Yeah, what's, uh, I'll just show the other couple of little Lingo Lab ones here. So with Lingo Lab Live, the uh, quiz game one. Uh, 
it'll look like this. You see the players lined up there. Very easy to join from a mobile phone. That the whole all of the Lingo Lab apps work well in mobile phone. They can join with a QR code or a, a link, and they'll be answering questions like that, competing with each other. You get uh, feedback at the end too, so you can see which questions people um, made most mistakes with. Um, uh, within the lingolab.co app in the profile page, the students just will share their progress just by putting in the email address of uh, the teacher on uh, the teacher's Lingo Lab online account. Very easy. And you can, uh, if you do that in class, you can just see as people. Are connecting to check that they're connecting without any problems. Uh, what else? Creating quizzes, also very easy. And this has a nice live update function. Um, just like the Socrative one, you can see as soon as someone has entered an answer within the test. So you can actually see that, like a horse race, the, the progress of all the, the um, students through the test. Okay, I think we are pretty much out of time. Uh, pretty much, so if I could just uh, request that everybody uh, unmute your microphones, maybe even open up that camera and let's give uh, Oliver a great round of applause for a wonderful presentation. Thank you very much, Oliver. Oh, Woo! Thank you. I'll just put my, uh, I'll put my email in in the chat if anyone has more questions. Maybe I'll put, uh, put the... Um... And from now, for the first time in OTJ SS21 history, we're actually having a lunch break. <laughs> uh, the next... Mike Lines. I'll just put the uh, URLs in the chat. Renee. So um, I think I got all those things. Hmm. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to leave this room open. So if you want to have a chat with each other, um, I might actually, perhaps I should open a few breakout rooms. How about that? So if you feel like being sociable during uh, the lunch hour, uh, by all means do so. I'll close.